The global economic crisis came as no surprise for Professor David Ting. In 2005, he realized that global trade was completely unbalanced and could lead to worldwide disaster. The U.S. financial system in particular was totally, absolutely out of balance. So the system has no other way but collapse. And it did. Since 2008, the U.S. has endured what economists have called the worst financial crisis since the Great Depression way back in the 1930s. Thing has been involved in the global financial markets for more than 20 years. He's the founder of a theory called the financial tree system, which is an integrated system of accounting, financial management, products, and other factors affecting a company, or in this case, a country. In short, it shows how if the branches of a tree becomes too much for the trunk to support, some sort of collapse is inevitable. But things not want just to predict chaos and watch it happen. He says the whole issue of letting the renminbi appreciate against the dollar is the underlying solution to the global trade imbalance. In other words, if the renminbi is allowed to rise against the dollar, Americans won't buy so many made-in-China products, and that in turn will help reduce Washington's trade deficit. That said, he still remembers the frustration he felt back in 2005 after his repeated efforts to sound the alarm in both China and the U.S. went apparently unheeded. You know, I was so fed up because I got no positive re response. If President Bush didn't come over here to Beijing to see me, there's going to be a whole lot of trouble waiting for him. Thing wasn't alone in his correct forecast, and there's no lack of support for his suggested recovery plan. But of course, it's not up to him. President Obama's first full day in China will be all business. And while there are a range of topics sure to be on the agenda, no series of talks between the two countries would be complete without some serious discourse on global trade. China has been under pressure from all sides to raise its currency value, which has been pegged at around 6.83 yuan to the dollar since July last year. Last week, China's central bank released a report that, for once, did not mention the well-known phrase of keeping the renminbi basically stable at a reasonable and balanced level. Many took this as a sign that China was finally willing to let its currency appreciate. But the next day, China rejected the premise, saying the new wording doesn't mean a change in the renminbi's exchange rate policy and that a major rise in the currency's strength in the near future is very unlikely. But many still expect to see a rise in the mid to long term. Economists say China fears a stronger renminbi would hurt exports as well as the country's economic growth. So while the exchange rate with the dollar has remained stable for the last year and a half, the currencies of many of China's exporting rivals have risen against the dollar, creating what some outside China see as an imbalanced creation of unfair global trade. But all the concern over China's currency policy is seen by others as overblown. Morgan Stanley's Asia chairman, Stephen Roach, says critics should let China decide for itself how it wants to manage its currency. And besides, not everyone agrees the appreciation of the renminbi will solve all the problems. Professor Wing Tai Wu from the University of California at Davis says similar things were happening to Japan in the 1980s when Tokyo allowed the yen to rise against the dollar. Its trade surplus with the U.S. narrowed, but Washington's trade deficit with the rest of the world didn't. The U.S. kept buying more imports from other Asian countries with cheaper currencies. Wu expects a similar outcome with China, and his suggestion is for the U.S. to stop spending beyond its means and for China to develop its financial sector so that its savings can be invested at home. Ting and others may disagree, but as long as there's no shortage of conflicting advice from qualified academics and policymakers, government leaders around the world will continue to debate the best way forward for the global economy. Sylvia Gunawan, BON.